The smart glasses space is heating up. So in this video, I wanna take a look at some XR or spatial glasses. These aren't AI glasses in that there's no onboard assistant, but they're not quite virtual reality goggles either. I'd describe them as display glasses, essentially wearable monitors that can support different levels of extended reality depending on what you connect them to. Over the past month, I've been testing both of Vitcher's newest XR glasses, the Luma Pro and Luma Ultra, and while I'll caution you that this technology is still in development, I'm pretty optimistic about where it's headed. So, in this video, I'll walk you through just how the Luma Pros and Ultras compare, what makes them similar, what sets them apart, and how they're capable of different XR experiences. We'll also look at the accessories that unlock each level of functionality, like the XR adapter, Pro Mobile Dock, and Pro Neckband, to help you understand how best to spend your money to unlock the experience that you're looking for. First though, you should know that Vitcher sent me these products at my request, but as always, they've had no say in this video's content, so everything you'll hear reflects my own experiences and opinions. That said, let's get into it. The Luma Pro comes in at 499 USD, while the Luma Ultra steps up to 599. Later this year, there's also a third model, the Vitcher Beast, which will slot in right between at $549. Now, to put that in context, these sit in roughly the same price range as something like the MetaQuest 3 at $499, but they're focused on a very different experience. Rather than being standalone VR headsets, these are designed to connect to your existing devices, whether that's your phone, computer, or one of Vitra's accessories, to move your existing content into XR. Both glasses come in a regular frame size with adjustable lens tilt and built-in myopia adjustment from zero to minus four. However, the pros also offer a larger fit variant if you have a wider interpupillary distance. Otherwise, both share the same core setup out of the box, a carrying case, magnetic connector cable, and the silicon connector sock, which I highly recommend using since it keeps your hair from getting caught in the magnetic pin array. Both the Luma Pro and Ultras share a similar aesthetic, a dark frosted translucent frame with subtle gray accents and red Vitcher branding along the arms. They look sleek, but noticeably a little chunkier than a regular pair of sunglasses because of all the tech packed inside. Inside the brow of the glasses, there are two tiny Sony OLED displays, which project images through birdbath optical prisms into your field of view. This creates a floating screen effect, like you're looking at a huge 152 inch monitor placed three meters in front of your face that moves with your head. The top of each lens is completely blacked out to hide the internal components, and this fades to a tinted sunglass finish below. You can darken this further with the electrochromic tinting button on the right arm, which increases contrast for better visibility. Both models include a central RGB camera on the bridge, which will eventually enable spatial tracking for three or six degrees of freedom. The Ultra adds two additional downward facing grayscale cameras for hand tracking, which is a pretty big upgrade and one of the key hardware differences between the two. Both glasses connect to your external devices through a proprietary magnetic pin array at the back of the right arm, via a cable that terminates in a USB-C connector. In terms of comfort, both are surprisingly light, at around 87 grams for the Pros and 90 for the Ultra, so I've had no issues wearing them for a few hours at a time, but you'll want to make sure that you try on all three sizes of the magnetic nose bridge supports and dial in the focus using the diopters to get everything nice and crisp. Both use 120Hz Sony OLED displays with a 1920 by 1200 per eye resolution and a 52 degree field of view. In both cases, the screens are surprisingly sharp, probably because you get two 1920 by 1200 displays overlapping to create the images that you see. But you can pixel peep if you really want to. It's difficult to convey this in video, but brightness differs between the two with the Ultras hitting a noticeably brighter 1500 nits compared to the 1000 nits of the Pros. Though in practice, both are more than bright enough for indoor use, and they both offer a few color and contrast picture modes, which is nice as well. Most of the time, I actually found myself reducing the Ultras brightness to match the Pros for most content. Audio comes from Harman tuned speakers built into the arms, 
They're clear and loud enough for casual viewing, though like most open-ear designs, they leak sound. So earbuds are still better if you're in a shared space. It's worth noting here that the Ultra also has a built-in microphone, which the Pro does not. In short, both deliver high quality display experiences in a lightweight body, but the Ultra adds brighter screens, a microphone, and hardware for hand tracking, while the Pro keeps things simpler in order to save cost. The XR experience enabled by these glasses changes a lot depending on what they're connected to. At their simplest, both the Luma Pro and Ultra can act as external display glasses, simply mirroring your phone, laptop, or console onto a larger virtual screen that's pinned to all of your head movements. In this default static mode, it feels like you're working with a private 24 inch screen floating about half a meter in front of your face. It's surprisingly clear with only a bit of blur and chromatic aberration around the edges and quite immersive. But since the content moves with your head, it's more of a portable monitor than a virtual environment. Its positioning also blocks out most of the real world. However, you can enable ambient mode when using the Spacewalker app on mobile to shrink the screen down into a picture in picture display, which I found to be quite helpful. Step up to three degrees of freedom and things start to feel more dynamic. Here, the glasses use built-in sensors to anchor the screen's position relative to your head, so when you turn or tilt, the screens don't rotate with you, but they're still constrained at fixed distances in front of your face, so they follow you around. This is currently available when using the Luma Pros with the Spacewalker app on Mac, iOS, and the Vitcher Pro neckband, and it adds a sense of stability that helps text or UI elements feel a little more natural. Moving up to the Luma Ultras, we get full six degree of freedom capabilities when paired with the Spacewalker app on Mac or the Pro neckband. This is the most natural experience for me because the virtual content is locked in position somewhere in the room so you can move closer or further away from it simply by moving your body. Move in to look at the time in the corner of your monitor and it doesn't drift away from your head, which is pretty neat. That said, for both three and six off experiences, the virtual elements are only visible when they're within the screen region of your view. So it's like you're viewing an XR world through a borderless 24 inch window half a meter in front of your face. At first I found this to be a little jarring because elements would simply appear and disappear from my view, unlike XR on Quest 3 where your physical field of view might be more restricted, but the virtual environment is everywhere that you can see. Sixed-off modes are expected to eventually come to the pros as well, using the front RGB camera. However, there's no clear timeline on this yet, and I'm not sure when or even if these multi-degree of freedom experiences might be available in the Vitcher Spacewalker app across all devices. All of the multi-degree of freedom XR experiences I've shown so far are powered through Vitcher's Spacewalker app, which runs on mobile, desktop, and the pro neckband. Without the app, the glasses simply act as an external display, mirroring content statically from the connected device. But the Spacewalker app unlocks different experiences on each platform. On mobile, it acts like a new user interface that's slightly more targeted at XR content, allowing you to access various content platforms like Netflix through an integrated web browser. Here, your phone's sensors allow you to control a virtual laser pointer to help you navigate the interface or you can change it to trackpad mode and simply scroll around. You also get access to Vitcher's immersive 3D mode for some streaming services, which does a surprisingly good job of converting flat 2D photos and videos into 3D versions. This isn't something that I can share in this video, but it's very much like a 3D theater experience. And if you buy the XR adapter, you can charge your phone while connected to your glasses, which is handy because they do consume a lot of power. More on that later. The adapter also enables 3 off experiences on your phone, where you can look from side to side through the interface rather than needing to scroll using your phone. But this is currently only available with the Luma Pros, not the Ultras. On Mac, the Spacewalker app goes a little further. It lets you configure the refresh rate and pin different virtual screen arrangements around you in space in either 3 off or 6 off depending on which glasses you're using, without needing the XR adapter. It's clearly focused on productivity, allowing you to bring multiple virtual monitors with you wherever you go, 
whereas the mobile experience feels more targeted at supersizing content consumption. Finally, the Pro Neckband is the most self-contained option, but also the most expensive because it's essentially a small wearable computer that sits on your shoulders, allowing you to move around and engage in content more freely. It runs Android with Spacewalker acting as a modified operating system that enables three or six DOF capabilities. The interface here is more like a native Android VR setup with Play Store apps running natively, which makes for a much more complete experience. You get the freedom of a mobile device with capabilities more in line with a desktop. To control the interface, there's a companion phone app that moves a virtual laser pointer to navigate but the neckband also supports pretty decent hand tracking. When paired with the Luma Pros, you rely on a single camera embedded in the neckband for tracking, while the Ultra's side cameras enable a broader and more natural volume in which you can track your hands. Either way, the hand tracking is better than I expected, and Vitcher has released some first-party apps that feel pretty immersive in 3D. The only issue is, there aren't many apps yet that take advantage of the three-dimensionality that's possible. Personally, I've most enjoyed using these glasses with Steam Link on the Pro Neckband when paired with one of the Vitcher 8-Bit Doe Collaboration Ultimate 2C controllers for Xbox or Switch to game anywhere in the house on a huge stable monitor. Though it's worth noting here that any Android-compatible controller would pair to the neckband. Oh yeah, and the glasses are both Switch 1 and Switch 2 compatible, allowing you to mirror your Nintendo content onto a huge screen from anywhere. Though, because Nintendo is funny about their proprietary docking, you have to use the Vitcher Pro Mobile Dock to connect to the Switch, and there are no 3DOF or 6DOF capabilities, just static mirroring. That said, the dock is pretty well thought out, doubling as a 13,000 mAh battery to extend your playtime, while also splitting the input signal either from the dual-colored USB-C port or an HDMI port to up to two glasses simultaneously, which would be amazing if you're traveling with a friend, but to be fair, would also be quite an expensive experience. After spending about a month with both the Luma Pro and Ultra glasses, I've really come to appreciate how far Vitcher has pushed this concept of wearable displays. I can't say that I would be comfortable wearing these everywhere that I go with sunglasses, but it's impressive just how much they can do in such a small form factor, especially when you consider the clarity, color, and refresh rate that these tiny OLED panels deliver. That said, some of the hardware isn't fully functional, and the software feels like it's catching up to the hardware at times. Battery life is also a big factor. These screens need a lot of power. I did some worst case testing with the ultras connected at full brightness and half volume while watching a YouTube video for an hour, and I found that I could get realistically a little over an hour on the Pro Neckband, say three and a half on my iPhone, and about eight from my MacBook Pro. So while they're portable, you'll still want to make your plans around a power source for longer sessions. I also ran into some screen drift issues where the virtual screens would slowly move away from where I had pinned them in 3DOF or 6DOF modes. This was more pronounced with the Pros than the Ultras, and is something that the company is actively working on, but it's worth noting. It's also challenging to look past the expense. By the time you add in a few accessories, it gets quite expensive compared to something like the Quest 3. Though because of their form, there are places that I would take these that I just wouldn't use my Quest 3. If you're interested in exploring the early stages of spatial computing, the Luma Pro offers a solid entry point that I think pairs best with the XR adapter to unlock some neat mobile content experiences. But if you want to experience where this tech is heading with better hand tracking and full 6 off feel, the Luma Ultra is probably your best bet and I'd pair it with the Pro Neckband to create an on-the-go productivity or game streaming XR workstation. Either way, it's been an exciting glimpse into the future of mixed reality, and I'm looking forward to seeing how far this ecosystem can go. I'll leave affiliate links for both models and all of the accessories below, along with a discount code that you can use if you're interested in picking something up. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.